Hi, it's Eric White. Today I'm going to do a deep dive into OpenXML, word processing ML, fields, and hyperlinks. Most text in documents is static, but some text is dynamic. For instance, you might want to insert a page reference to content on another page. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to create a new document. insert some random text. I'm going to insert a hard page break. Some more random text. I'm going to insert a bookmark right here. I'll call it bookmark A. And then up here I'll add some text. And I'll insert a page reference field. And we can see that the text now says, for information, see page 2. So let's drop down here and I'll add some more text. And I'm going to put this on its own page. And now I can come up here and I can say update field and it now says for more information see page 3. These are the capabilities that fields give you. They give you the ability to insert content that can update or change based on the contents of the document or based on the current conditions. You might insert a date into a document and then you can select an option to have that date always show the current date. Let's take a quick look at the markup for a page reference. I'm going to close this document and create a new one. I'm going to create a simpler document so it's easier to see the markup. I'm going to insert a bookmark. I'll name the bookmark A. And I'm going to add the reference at the very top here. I'll select Quick Parts, Field, Page Down to Page Ref, select Bookmark A, and click OK. Let's save that, close it. I'm going to drag Test 2 to Visual Studio. I'm using the Visual Studio Power Tools for OpenXML that allow you to edit OpenXML packages just by dragging and dropping an OpenXML document onto Visual Studio. Let's open up document.xml. I'm going to format the document. I type Control E, Control D to format the document. Here we can see the markup for a simple field. We can see that the instructional text is page ref A. We can see that the current value of that is 2. So that's a pretty simple little field that I inserted into that document. Next, I want to talk about fields and working with fields in Microsoft Word 2010. I'm going to create a new document. There are a variety of ways that you can cause fields to be inserted into your document. You can insert the date and time just by clicking this button right here on the ribbon. Select the formatting. And that inserted a field. Of course, another way to insert a field is, as I showed you before, select Quick Parts and Field. Select the field that you want to insert. We can come down here and insert date and select the format that we want to use. Another way to insert a field is using the keyboard. I can press Control F9, then type date, and that also inserted a date field. If I click this update button, then it also gets updated to show the current date. There are a number of keys that are important 
with fields in the word user interface. Another important keyboard shortcut is pressing Alt F9. Alt F9 switches between the value of the field and the instructional text of the field. So I can press Alt F9 multiple times and see the fields toggle between their value and the instructional text. If I want to switch a single field between its instructional text and the value of the field, I can press Shift F9. I can then just select particular fields and toggle those between the field code and between the value of the field. The last keyboard shortcut that is of interest is Control Shift F9 and that replaces the field with its field value. This is called unlinking the field. In this particular case, if I select all and type Control Shift F9, at this point in time, I now no longer have fields. Those fields have been replaced with the value of those fields. So learning about fields is pretty important when you're working with OpenXML markup. There are a number of areas that use fields hyperlinks, when you insert a table of content, that also uses fields. I'm going to show you that markup in a bit. Page numbers, as I showed you previously, dates, calculated values, and there's a whole vast variety of other areas of functionality that you can use fields for in an OpenXML document. There are two varieties of markup for fields. There's simple markup and complex markup. The simplified markup is simply a representation of a field that's easier to see and in fact more importantly if you are generating documents it's easier to generate that markup. However the complex form is not so very hard once you know what to look for. I'm going to go through the process of creating fields with both types of markup. First we'll look at creating a simple field. I'm going to create a new document. Let's look at the markup in Visual Studio. By inserting a date field in that fashion, I created a field using the simple markup. That's this field simple element right here. In the field simple element, we can see the instructional text stored as an attribute on the field simple element. We can also see the current value of that field is 419 2011. Now, let me show you something interesting. I am going to close that document. I'm not going to save it. So this is the document as I originally created it. I am going to press Alt F9 to switch between the instructional text and the value of that field. And now I can see the field with its open curly brace and closed curly brace. Interestingly enough, I can go in here and I can select this text and I can format that text. I made DA bold and TE are not bold. Let's save it and then take a look at the markup. Format the document. So in this situation what I have done is I've caused Word to save that field in the complex form of markup rather than the simple form of markup. I'm going to walk through this complex form of markup. In the complex form of markup, the important element, the element that you need to pay attention to is this FLD char field. There will be three of these for most fields. There will be a field char with field char type of begin and a field char with a field char type of separate and a field char with a field char type of end. The instructional text will be between the field char type of begin 
and the field chart type of separate. So we can see the instructional text here. There are three elements, INSTRTEXT, one with the DA, which was formatted with bold, and another with TE, which was not formatted with bold. Then the value of the field or the result of the field will always be between the field char with a field char type of separate and a field char with a field char type of end. And in this particular case, we can see that it has the current date of 4-19-2011. This is important because sometimes we actually want to extract the text of the document and we don't want to pay attention to the filled instructional text. We just want the document as it appears. And so there will be times when you are processing OpenXML documents when you will want to ignore the contents of a field between the begin and the separate and only pay attention to the value or the result of the field which is between separate and end. This is the end of part one of this two-part video.